Without further ado, once again, welcome to the webinar. We're very happy to have you. I will hand over to Martin Small and Rita Excel to commence the presentation. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rita Excel. I'm joined by Martin Small. And we're pleased to present to you this uh, webinar on uh, ISO 39001. Um, we're going to have people joining us throughout, but it's important that we start on time because we understand that your time is limited. As uh, Angela's explained, uh, the webinar will go for approximately 60 minutes. We'll have 40 minutes of presentation and then 20 minutes of question time. But um, uh, Martin and I are going to do a tag team, so I would encourage you to write your questions as you think of them and uh, we'll sort of uh, interrupt if necessary and answer your questions uh, as they're relevant to what's being spoken about. So I'll hand over to Martin and he can uh, start the webinar. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Rita, and welcome everybody. I have an interest from a wide range of organisations in um, several different countries. Uh, so welcome to you all. I hope you're all uh, uh, ready to go and keep those questions piling in. We'll um, uh, we'll do our very best to to answer them as we go. Uh, it's great pleasure to be uh, presenting this webinar with uh, Arb Group. Uh, I've been involved in the development of ISO 39001 from its inception, and uh, it's great to see the level of interest that's uh, starting to build, certainly within the um, uh, Australian market. Um, we thought we might start with some questions. So, here they are. Why ISO 39001? Why not something else? Why not what you're doing already? Uh, how is it relevant to my business? How is it developed? What are the essential features and what can I do next? Uh, you'll have some other questions. We thought these might be some questions which you might like some answers to um, as we start. Um, well, let's start with why. Road traffic is a leading cause of death and disability throughout the world. Each year, road traffic systems are responsible for an estimated 1.24 million fatalities around the world. In Australia, they are responsible for 1,300 fatalities and over 30,000 serious injuries. And notably, half of all work-related fatalities in Australia occur on the road traffic, in the road traffic system. So this is a major, major issue affecting many, many people right throughout the world. Uh, and ISO 39001 is, uh, is something which is addressing uh, that very issue. What ISO 39001 does is combine the best practice and knowledge regarding road traffic safety and quality management systems into a single management tool. So you might have heard of both of those things. Uh, road traffic safety, I'll, I'll go through a few things at a later point, just to talk about the origins of ISO 39001 in terms of its uh, road safety heritage. It comes from impeccable bloodlines. It also comes from impeccable bloodlines in terms of management systems as well, because ISO 39001 has been developed uh, on the back of uh, uh, quality management systems ISO, 39, uh, ISO 9001. Another uh, management system that you might be familiar with is environmental management systems ISO 14001. So what it does is it provides organisations with a single point of reference to manage and address uh, the number one uh, safety risk that are likely, you're likely to face in your organisation. It provides you with the opportunity to reduce and ultimately eliminate the incidents and risk of death and serious injury related to road traffic crashes. So, there are a number of different uh, uh, starting points for uh, organisations in this area. And I thought it was just worth mentioning a few now. And we're going to try and run a poll yeah. on this. Uh, so, here's a question for you. Um, if you, uh, if, uh, which of these organisations would you say best represents your organisation? If you're an organisation that's accredited to an ISO management standard such as 9001 or 14001, you'll be more easily able to accredit yourself to ISO 39, 39001 because you've got a, a, a widely
widely recognized management system capable of driving uh, innovation and performance improvement in your business. Uh, and what this, what 39001 will do is increase your capacity uh, to address this primary safety risk that you're likely to face. You might not be accredited to an ISO management system, but you might, might be accredited to another ma safety management system. And if you are, you've got a head, up, head start as well. And what ISO 39001 offers is another step up. Uh, what it does is provide you with a comprehensive look at, at the uh, risk factors and the management systems that you need to have in place uh, if you're really serious about reducing and ultimately eliminating road traffic safety risk on the road. So we're getting quite a few uh, uh, responses already. Uh, at the moment, I think that looks about 40% uh, of uh, votes are still coming in. 60% uh, <laughs> of voted so far. Sixty percent have voted so far, uh, and uh, oh, maybe seventy percent. So we've got about thirty-five percent of the people participating in uh, organisation in today's webinar have a an ISO management system uh, in already in place. Uh, so that's a that's a great start. It's about forty-five percent of organisations represented uh, in the webinar today. Uh, are accredited to some other safety management system. So you're in a good space too. There's 20% a little more uh, that have no systems in place. Uh, and really, um, that exposes you to a bit of a bit of risk. Not just you, but any organisation which isn't really addressing uh, road traffic safety risk. It is such a deeply entrenched uh, risk that is faced in society today. And I'm just going to have a look at one of those um, one of those ways in which organisations are exposed. There are lots of different things that could be said about this uh, graph. But the key thing here is that over the last 30 years, there has been a complete turnaround in how corporations see their uh, market value. In the 1980s, the vast bulk of a corporate's value uh, was seen in on the books. They were profit and loss statements. Uh, they were all of the things, they were assets and liabilities, all of the things that can get counted up very directly uh, and uh, reported in annual reports. Uh, and they count, accounted for about 80% of uh, a corporate uh, corporate value in, the, in 1980. 30 years later, it's completely turned around. So chief executives still get hired and fired on their ability to turn a profit each year. But there's a far greater thing which they need to keep their eye on, and that is this total market value. All of the stuff that goes into building a corporation's reputation, and of course a corporate's reputation uh, can be um, uh, won and particularly lost on safety. So what we can see is a significant potential for reputational damage uh, and a lot of that can, uh, can be seen in terms of safety. We don't need to go far before we uh, can think of very high profile uh, corporations who have been uh, uh, um, badly affected by safety uh, factors in some fashion or other. One of the things which ISO 39001 does is it uh, cuts to the chase. It identifies the 10 safety factors that really matter out there. There's an awful lot of advice that you don't have to go very far to find on fleet management or other things to do with uh, corporate uh, interests in, in road safety. But what we're going to show you today, is, uh, towards the end of the presentation, are the 10 safety factors that really matter. This is a key and unique feature of ISO 39001, uh, and it may, makes it quite different in terms of a quality and performance uh, standard than even ISO 9001 and 14001, because it makes it very clear um, what the issues are that an organisation needs to look for and manage 
uh, in road traffic safety. Those safety factors uh, uh, that need to be considered are based on a uh, considerable base of research evidence and the best expert analysis about what actually works in reducing road traffic safety risk. What it will allow organisations to do is to look again at what they're doing and identify new areas of focus for how they manage uh, critical safety risks. So one of the things which you might want to think about is the relevance of, the, uh, of ISO 39001 to your organisation. Well, I've asked many different people now over the last several years to name an organisation or a type of organisation uh, who has no connection, which has no connection to road traffic safety. And I haven't found one yet. Uh, well, nobody's answered the, answered the question in the, in the affirmative by, na by naming one. So what I'd like to do is just speak briefly about uh, how road traffic safety risk may be relevant to your organisation. It'll be in different ways. But if you can answer one of these four things in the affirmative, that that's, this is actually what you're involved in, then you're right in the middle of road traffic safety risk and have got a big opportunity to make a contribution in reducing that risk, exposure to risk within your company and within the community that you, uh, that, that you work within. So one of those risks is that you have employees who use the road transport system to get to and from work or while they're, while they're on duty. Of course, there are some organisations where um, the whole organisation is bound up uh, with people working on the road in the road transport system. Uh, but there are also organ plenty of organisations where it's, a, 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 it's a, an incidental part of the, uh, of the daily work and uh, is, is still representing a significant um, safety risk within that organisation. If you're, if you're, good, if you're uh, um, delivering goods or passenger transport services, well you contact other organisations to deliver goods or passenger transport services, then you've got a real stake in road traffic safety as well. Uh, the safe movement of people and goods to and from the locations they're, uh, they're needing to get to uh, is an essential efficiency uh, uh, matter, uh, quite apart from uh, a safety matter. Uh, so this is a very, this standard is potentially for you as well. If you are involved in activities that generate traffic to and from locations such as supermarkets and schools, universities, hospitals, sporting stadiums, you've got a stake in road traffic safety as well. People are getting to and from your place uh, in a way uh, which is uh, maybe more or less safe and you've got an opportunity to um, uh, reduce the risk of people uh, engaging in those activities around your uh, around your business. And obviously if you're involved in uh, delivering services or products for the road traffic system such as um, roads or vehicles, um, you're right in the thick of it as well. Uh, you're actually providing services which people um, uh, are using uh, and, and may unfortunately um, uh, uh, be involved in, uh, in, a, in a casualty or a crash situation. So there's lots of different ways of looking at ISO 39001, at looking at the risk uh, that your company is exposed to in road traffic safety. I'd like to just come back to one uh, aspect of, the, uh, of road traffic safety risk, and that's its relationship with the workplace. Because more work-related fatalities occur on the road than anywhere else. The data I've got up here uh, is from Safe Work Australia uh, in their 2007 report. They report things slightly differently in different years, uh, but if you were to look at their 2010 data, it would show broadly the same. What they reported in 2007, Safe Work Australia, was that 237 of 453 work-related fatalities occurred on the road. What they do is divide those divide fatalities up into three different ways. Uh, 
uh, into worker fatalities, into commuter fatalities, and into bystander fatalities. So of all worker fatalities, one third of, work of them occurred on the road, 103 out of 295. Almost all commuter fatalities in 2007, 91 out of 93, occurred on the road. And two thirds of bystander fatalities, 43 out of 65, uh, occurred on the road. Travel on the road presents a major risk, uh, a major safety risk to companies and to their customers and to the people who they engage with while they are on the road. And if we just look at uh, a, a little further at the worker fatalities, I said before that one third of worker fatalities occur on the road, but there's only one third of the fatalities that don't involve vehicles or traffic in some form or other. And that's a pretty consistent picture over an extended period of time reported by Safe Work Australia. Now, if you're in a different, uh, a different country, you might find a different set of um, uh, different set of uh, work-related fatality uh, data uh, in relation to the road. But essentially, that you will see a similar picture of this uh, wherever you are. Um, just the, I think we've probably got a final count on the uh, on the votes. We've got 34 percent of uh, participants in ISO. Uh, systems, 45% with some safety management system in operation, 21% with no uh, quality or safety management system in place. So thanks very much for responding there. We had three quarters of you uh, coming back uh, to us on that. Uh, and of course, um, uh, if you've got any questions as we go, then uh, please pile them through now um, and we'll come back to them at a, at a later point. We thought it would be worth just speaking briefly about the origins of uh, ISO 39001 in relation to road safety, and then later just uh, looking at some of the uh, private sector um, initiatives that have been uh, in place in relation to the, uh, the safety risk as well. One of the key foundations of uh, ISO 39001 is its direction towards reducing and ultimately eliminating uh, road traffic safety, uh, road traffic related uh, death and serious injury. Uh, and that ties it right back to the uh, foundation uh, declaration in the Swedish Parliament in 1997 that no one should be killed or seriously injured within the road traffic safety system. That was a, a, a real breakthrough in terms of how uh, road safety is seen throughout the world. It's not something which is inevitable, it's something which can be progressively eliminated. What we've seen since then is a whole series of uh, reports uh, and research uh, uh, programs that have uh, uh, built on that uh, through to the point where ISO 39001 has been developed. This Dutch uh, study uh, was an essential uh, aspect, looking at environment and road, the road environment uh, for the like. The World Health Organization uh, became very concerned in the middle of the last decade about the scale of road traffic safety injury across the world. The OECD piled in with this very influential report uh, on Towards Zero, actually spelling out some of the things which you need to make it happen. The World Bank uh, started to codify the management systems that were needed to be put in place to systematically eliminate uh, road traffic injury. The U United Nations declared a decade of action for road safety in 2011 uh, and it identified ISO 39001 as a key plank uh, in the activity that was required to make substantial inroads to this worldwide safety problem that we face. But they look like very public agencies. Um, there's a lot of private corporate interest in road traffic safety as well. Uh, one of the earliest ones is uh, the Network of Employers for Traffic Safety in the United States, uh, a, a collection of major, major corporations, multinational corporations, who realised that what they needed to do was start sharing uh, information better 
uh, so that there was a, a better understanding with, between them about how they could reduce this, uh, this significant risk which they faced. One of the best sets of uh, advice uh, at, at the moment is uh, based in the, in the UK, Driving for Better Business, uh, established uh, with support from the Department for Transport there, but very much uh, a, 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 an initiative which is uh, looking at sharing uh, information between corporations about how they can best reduce this risk that they face. The European Transport Safety Council uh, has provided uh, significant advice there. But there's a lot of work that's been done uh, across Australia and New Zealand and over the last uh, 10 years or so um, to, really, um, to really lift the game as well. The Australasian Fleet Managers Association uh, have been active in providing their, me their members with advice on how to manage safety from a, a fleet perspective. Uh, TruckSafe is an initiative of the Australian Trucking Association uh, and provides um, a, a important support for uh, any of their uh, member operations who seek to accredit themselves to, to that uh, safety uh, management system. Uh, a decade ago in New Zealand there was a big push uh, to have all road controlling authorities develop safety management systems. Uh, in, uh, across the 70 odd um, road controlling authorities there. Um, there's a lot of progress there. As well uh, in Australia, the Australian Logistics Council uh, has their own National Logistics Safety Code. What ISI 39001 does is pick up all of the understanding that is, uh, that is available in the world about uh, road traffic safety risk and how to best manage it and pull it in all into one uh, best practice model uh, which is now available uh, to, uh, in the market for people to um, accredit themselves to. One of the things which has happened in Australia is a significant effort that's been put in by the National Transport Corp uh, Commission, the NTC, uh, into a, a corporate road safety initiative and what they did was involve a whole lot of different uh, Australian uh, uh, corporates that are represented uh, in Australia, uh, including one or two non-governmental organisations as well. So major, uh, major corporate groupings, again, coming together to share information about uh, uh, how they are best placed to manage safety uh, in their organisation. And these are some of the benefits that were reported by uh, those corporations in that NTC project. Uh, and, and this is from a base of those organisations looking at uh, who are engaged in uh, managing that road traffic safety risk uh, and who have been active in, active in the area. What they are able to report uh, collectively was reduced fatalities and serious injuries that they face. And certainly they'd be facing reduced risk of fatality and serious injury as well, based on the, some of the things that they've been doing. Uh, they, could re, they could report reduced fuel consumption. Obviously speed management is a critical factor in anything in relation to organisational uh, road traffic safety risk. And uh, of course the faster that uh, a vehicle drives, certainly on the open road, uh, the greater the fuel consumption. So reduced fuel consumption uh, the, is something which can, was reported. Reduced work cover claims and insurance premiums. And it's not just that uh, systems are in place in these corporations, but actually the results transfer through to what they end up getting charged in the market um, to cover the risk that they face. What they also report is reduced fleet maintenance and overall operating costs uh, because uh, there's such a, there's such a uh, tie-in between uh, safe uh, practices and um, uh, and asset uh, asset maintenance, um, reduced vehicle accidents and rollovers, and increased deep fleet life expectancy as well. So a whole lot of different ways in which they were able to identify and and uh, and monetize the value of a, a more concerted approach on road traffic safety risk. And of course, um, what all of you will understand is that when some of these things happen, what they're also getting is a stronger corporate culture, uh, increased staff retention, 
uh, and benefits throughout their organisation. Okay, thank you Martin. Um, now I would like to um, start to talk about the context of what this means for organisations and what ISO 39001 means for you in particular. And Arbswold primarily is as a research provider, but it's also to transfer and translate research into practice and to bring um, together the researchers and those that need to apply the research into a, a realistic um, operational uh, methodology to have an impact. So it's no use just doing research in isolation if it's not translated into practice. And ISO 39001 is essentially showing and demonstrating how now, uh, and we saw from our poll that almost 80 percent of participants on this um, uh, webinar have got ISO management systems or some other safety management system already in place. So this is about bringing what's best practice, how you can build on your existing practices to achieve uh, a higher operating and safety performance. So what does ISO 39001 require organisations to do? It really requires uh, all organisations to understand their road safety context and influence. And we might say that most people understand that already by having safety um, uh, systems in place, but it's the issue is the influence. The influence that organisations can have on the vision of most of our state uh, road safety strategies and in fact the national safety strategy, which is reducing um, fatal and serious injuries on our roads and minimising harm to road users. Um, so we have influence in that area. It's about establishing top management leadership and commitment. And the standard refers to top management, and that's the terminology that's used. And the definition of top management is those people who can influence the direction of an organisation and can allocate resources towards this safety task. So top management needs to be engaged at the very highest level and have an understanding and appreciation of what it can mean for them. We need to uh, ensure that there's policy and that the policy is not only exists but it's communicated and that there's great awareness of it throughout the organisation. And we need to understand that the safety performance factors that we identify are going to have a positive impact on road safety in a, in a measured way, in a research-based uh, way um, and that's why it's important that the terminology a known way. So it's measurable and it's uh, research-based. We need to have this, um, objectives and plans established and these need to be resourced appropriately and therefore that's why we need to have the buy-in from the top management and have it supported throughout the organisation and management functions. And also, as anybody who's involved in any sort of ISO system or corporate system, it needs to be measured, it needs to be regularly reviewed and there needs to be a continuous improvement and performance um, and measure and monitoring. So we talk about top management and what they must demonstrate in their leadership and this is, can be done in a variety of ways. And the road traffic safety policy and objectives that are consistent with the strategic direction of the organisation, so integrated within the strategic plan and vision of the organisation. We need to see that uh, embodied in uh, documentation that uh, staff and people that we can work with or for or work for us. Uh, they can see that that's articulated in uh, strategic plans. Integrating the road traffic safety management system into the business, and that can be by a range of measures. Uh, adopting the elimination of death and serious injury in road traffic crashes as a long-term objective and setting of interim targets to that regard. So in most people would say that that's something for the governments to do. But uh, what 39,001 um, 39, demonstrates is that there's a role for everybody, as Martin mentioned. There's probably nobody that uh, is no organisation, no function is missed out of, of who 39001 covers. And it's about working in partnership with interested parties and contributing to a safe road traffic system. Because um, we're going to talk about the top 10 or the 10 ways that we can implement this. And not all of them are uh, within our sphere of influence, but that's why we need to identify partners to work with. So um, as I mentioned, these top 10 um, in intermediate uh, safety performance factors, these are articulated and there's a lot more detail provided within the standard. But the first measure, and remember these are research based, so you can get safety outcomes that are known and expected 
um, by undertaking these uh, 10 performance uh, factors. So road design and safe speeds. Now we, you know, we've got examples there about separation of roads, roadsides and improving roadsides and intersections. But the key rule here is that it's not only uh, up to the people that uh, design the roads or fund the roads or manage the roads to do this, but it's up to us as individuals who use the roads and who have people using the roads as part of our business, either supporting or accessing our business, to make sure that they are operating uh, on a network that is safe for their task. So um, it's not just about designing it, but understanding what is safe road design and safe speed and articulating that. Uses of, of appropriate roads depending on vehicle type, and this is a lot to do with um, the type of vehicles that are within our fleet, uh, within our sphere of influence, and um, also the user type and cargo and equipment. So it's understanding our fit for purpose um, roads and identifying that network that we should use for our vehicles. Safe driving speeds, considering vehicle type, traffic and weather conditions. So everybody is bound by the road traffic rules and laws and speed limits. However, if we can um, provide direction and indication that uh, gives drivers the understanding of what safe driving speeds are, and give them training and understanding and appreciation about uh, traffic and weather conditions, and if we even recognise what we're putting, um, exposing our uh, providers or our own staff to, in that regard we can influence the outcome and minimise the risks. Use of personal safety equipment, restraints, helmets, he uh, lights, these are things that um, can be in integrated into operating and work plans and we, you know, we're familiar with PPE, uh, personal protection equipment, high, high visibility equipment, but it's important that this is articulated into um, other elements, of vehicles that are being used, and um, you know, uh, essentially that they're articulated, they're integrated, and they're documented and measured, uh, so people know that they have a requirement to uh, adhere to this. Driver fitness, fatigue, distraction, alcohol, and drugs. So again, this is something that we can put measurable um, uh, criteria towards, we can provide education, and we can understand in particular about distraction, the role of in-vehicle distractions and other distractions uh, that influence the driving task. Safe journey planning. So this is not only about uh, planning a route, but it's also identifying um, whether there's a need to travel, for, uh, if that's the most uh, viable option. Um, is to travel on the road traffic system. Is there an alternative? Can we minimise or can we eliminate the need to make those journeys or reduce the number of journeys on the network? Safe vehicles, um, vulnerable uh, road users, occupant protection, crash avoidance, mitigation, roadworthiness and load security. These are all factors that can be incorporated and um, ensuring that we have the right vehicle we have a vehicle purchasing uh, of the right type of vehicle with the right equipment um, can have a significant impact on the performance and safety of our uh, business and operation. And appropriate authorization for class of vehicle so that, that the drivers, um, the people, the, the drivers and the vehicles that we use are, um, are authorized for that type of vehicle. And that might seem you know, straightforward and logical, but it's important um, to look at what other mechanisms currently available and what are the limitations. So if it's to do with licensing and understanding somebody's license, whether their license is still available, if they've had uh, infringement notices or demerits or if they've had some suspensions on their license, does that allow, are we able to, um, to identify those uh, issues? And removal of unfit vehicles and drivers and riders, and again that uh, moves on from the point eight, is if we have un, uh, unfit vehicles in our fleet, not fit for purpose and not up to the safety uh, requirements, we have drivers and riders that are impaired um, or have operated with some level of um, impairment uh, and not licensed for the particular vehicles that they might operate, uh, it's important that they are removed from the system and we don't um, tolerate that. And finally, post-crash preparedness, recovery and rehabilitation. 
So this is about our own internal systems and access to other external systems that allow us to uh, ensure that the outcome of a crash is not necessarily a fatal and serious um, outcome. So, so in summary, ISO 39001 is a best practice tool and it's focused on reduction and elim eventual elimination of major organisational and societal safety risks. So we know that most organisations, including the people of, uh, participating in this webinar, do have some management system in place. Um, but the important thing is that ISO 39001 now provides the mechanism as a best practice tool to further uh, increase our sphere of influence to achieve this significant reduction in what Martin has uh, articulated as quite a significant risk for anybody that's involved with generating traffic on the road network. So ISO 39001 is relevant for many activities that are taken by many organisations. And it does require top management to commit to taking a step up in reducing road traffic risk. No longer can we say that some of these things are outside of our sphere of influence. No longer can we say that uh, the target to reduce death and, and serious injury on our road network belongs to others and that we're only interested in our, um, our business and how our business impacts on that. We do have a sphere of influence that extends much further through people that provide services to us and also by our own actions and um, the ISO 39001 accreditation allows those organisations that are leading the way in uh, safety and safe practices to demonstrate their, um, that, that, that they are leading the way. And it also provides key direction on how to achieve this in ways that are relevant for each organisation. So um, the standard does provide a direction and, and, and the important thing is that you review and look at the standard and see how your, where your organisation is at and how that maps towards the requirements of the standard. So where to next? And I mentioned about you know, looking at the standard and seeing how your organisation currently sits. So where uh, Martin and uh, in conjunction with our group We'll be conducting one-day seminars uh, starting in after July this year, and uh, we really look for um, uh, your feedback into you know your interest in having those presentations and workshops and seminars in your state uh, and in your country. It's about understanding and articulating your organisation's role in road safety and exploring safety factors that matter to you. If you look at ISO 39001, we will look at that in the seminar on a clause-by-clause -clause basis and uh, help you to identify where the gaps are and where the opportunities are for uh, looking towards the accreditation. And it's about assisting you also from a policy perspective to build the case for safety leadership in your organisation. That's the key thing uh, to start off with. You might be a person who's responsible uh, for safety in your organisation. You might be a person who's responsible for a series of assets or programs and you understand the role of safety. But to get that stuff working as effectively as it possibly can and to get the benefits that ISO 39001 uh, provides your organisation, um, you need to be able to build that case for the leadership of your organisation. And that's one of the key things that you'll get out of that one day seminar. Not just the deeper understanding, um, but actually going through the process of understanding what your organisation's role is, what the key things are that you need to focus on, how, it meant, how what you have done uh, already uh, maps in terms of gaps between uh, uh, that and uh, ISO 39001. So that when you return to your organisation, um, you've got a case that can be, uh, can be put to lift uh, priority of safety, uh, road traffic safety management in your organisation. So Martin, we've got some questions coming through and I'd encourage you to, um, you know, to type your questions in and we'll try and get to as many of those as we can. So the first question is about um, safe journey planning and whether this really means um, personal trips or is it about freight? And if it's about freight, is it about considering a rail alternative? Is it about an alternative 
a mode of transport or is it something else? Martin, do you want to? Well, uh, road transport is one of the um, uh, is one of the riskiest ways of um, of moving people and goods around. Uh, and so, yes, uh, when we look at safer journey planning, it very definitely looks at um, firstly the need for travel to occur. Uh, and if travel does need to occur in terms of either goods or, or, or people, um, what is the safest way in which that uh, that can occur? So yes, very definitely part of the mix. Safe journey planning is uh, uh, part of the one of those ten factors which uh, are probably uh, pulls every organisation into the same sort of space. How can we make the, those journeys the safest they possibly can be? Um, and if I can add, it might not necessarily be an alternate uh, mode of transport, it might be that is there a need to have as many trips, um, could we have less trips or could we have shorter trips. So it doesn't necessarily mean changing modes, it might mean um, uh, changing the frequency of those trips and eliminating some of the unnecessary trips. Another question we've got is um, are there moves for the ISO 39001 to become an AS Australian New Zealand standard 3901. Martin? Uh, yes, that's something which uh, Standards Australia has uh, expressed an interest in, in doing. Uh, the key thing has been to uh, get ISO 39001 over the line. It's published, it's in the market. There are companies now being certified. Uh, I certainly know in Japan and the United Kingdom uh, to it. And uh, Standards Australia have expressed interest in uh, adopting it as a Australian New Zealand standard as well. So um, there's a question about uh, the presentation. So definitely all participants who have logged in today will receive a copy of the presentation that will be PDF'd. Um, we've just put up our contact details here um, for uh, further information and also where you can get a copy of the standard and purchase a copy of the standard. So the next question we've got here is, is there a greater role for public transport to reduce the number of single occupant vehicles on the road? Uh, well, for any organisation uh, who is engaged in travel on the road, um, this, is a, this is the key management standard to reduce the safety risk associated with that travel. Uh, so public transport generally is safer than transport by car. So uh, the answer to that is yes. And of course, what this will also do is that what the standard also allows you to do is pull in a whole range of different things um, which uh, can assist you in improving the quality of your uh, travel within the organisation. Uh, from an environmental perspective in terms of uh, the question that's been raised, but also in relation to fuel consumption. And of course that cuts right down into the costs of an organisation as well. Just on that, it's important that um, we talked about top management and we talked about policies and strategic policies and integrating uh, road traffic safety into those. So if we, some of the things we're talking about, changing modes, uh, changing modes for people, the way individuals travel and individual trip planning and also movement of goods. Uh, how people come to our business and access our business. If we can start to consider how we can influence people coming and using other modes of travel to get to our business and to and from our business, um, that's something that needs to be integrated into high level decision making. For example, if you're looking at relocating and you're looking at relocating to a location where the only way to access for your staff um, is by vehicle, well then you're sort of you're not moving towards that uh, reduction in risk on the road. That's just an example. We've just got another question here regarding um, other one day workshops linked to the Austroads project SS1758. Um, so for those people who are not uh, familiar, Austroads is a national research body uh, funded by the State Road Authorities, the Australian Local Government Association and the Federal um, Department for um, Federal Office of um, Roads and the New Zealand, Transport, the New Zealand Agency. Transport Agency, of course. And there is a, a, a research project that is looking at the development of model safety management systems. And so in answer to that question, these workshops are really, um, that, it, it, these workshops are really about uh, sharing the information of what 39001 is all about 
and potentially building the policy and building uh, the, arg the, um, the argument to introduce it into your organisation and also providing assistance in how to map uh, what the path is to accreditation. So that um, particular Austroids project, Martin's probably best place to, that it hasn't commenced yet, but I'm sure it will inform it uh, in going forward. Uh, it's on uh, Austroids, uh, as I understand it's on that Austroids uh, program uh, for the next uh, financial year. Um, but this is, uh, it, it's one of several things which is being done to um, build, the, uh, build the market for ISO 39001 in Australia and New Zealand. So the other question is, what is the benefit for corporate companies to influence this effective tool to their staff? Well, there's a, there are a range of benefits to a corporation in this, uh, in this standard. Uh, first of all, it allows the corporation to uh, uh, better reduce the risk that they face, uh, their customers face, their staff face, and the, community, and, the, and the risks faced by the communities that they work within on the road. It's, a, it's the leading cause of death and disability throughout the world and corporations face that risk uh, as much a, and sometimes more than anybody else. I talked about the reputational risk, not just the uh, risk of being associated with death and, death and injury, but the flow on effects in terms of reputation. But there are massive costs associated if something goes wrong for a corporation. Uh, quite apart from anything else, there's a disrupt, disruption in supply chains, uh, there's costs and delays in, in, in that, uh, and there's clean-up time uh, as well. There's a lot of different ways in which uh, corporations face costs in this area, um, which ISO 39001 allows them to, uh, allows them to reduce. Um, so the next question is relating to the um, safe work. Uh, statistics and about some uh, clarification regarding the commuter bystander statistics. I might just get that slide back up if I, um, if I can do that. What were some of the uh, predominant causal factors in the, uh, the work-related fatalities? Is that yes. uh, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't have that data with me right now. Um, but we can be reasonably certain that they are a similar, um, uh, similar picture to uh, all of the causal factors. Uh, there will be a mix of uh, speed, there will be a mix of uh, fatigue, there will be a mix of a whole range of, uh, of human errors which are uh, associated, uh, associated with um, uh, work-related fatalities just as there are for any fatalities on, on the road. Um, one of the key research findings over the last couple of years, however, is that 90% uh, uh, of all non-fatal uh, serious injury that occurs in, uh, uh, in, um, on our networks uh, are a result of uh, basic human error, errors that you or I might make on the road. Um, what ISO 39001 does is allow corporations to put in place more systematic interventions to reduce the risk of those uh, errors um, resulting in fatality or serious injury. So we've just got a question here about is, would there be any difference in rural or urban approaches to the implementation of ISO 39001? And I think, well, uh, essentially it's an international standard it can be applied uh, as, as it sees fit, as organisations see fit to apply it, and essentially it can be applied to urban and rural settings. Martin? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, um, the particular responses may well change, uh, but in the, um, uh, in the regional context that the organisation uh, is, uh, is based. Um, but the systems um, should be pretty much the same. You're looking for leadership commitment from the organisation, uh, at uh, the organisation being very clear about what its influence is in road traffic safety, about going through those 10 safety factors that really matter and which are relevant to that business, and about integrating stronger safety decisions within uh, the um, organisation's uh, management uh, uh, approach. So I think we've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, one question here is, um, should the road safety and transport 
policies of countries on the whole will be revised to incorporate ISO 39001? Well, this is an interesting question because uh, uh, the ISO 39001 is a uh, is a tool which is relevant for any uh, public agency or any private uh, corporation. Uh, any any organisation can look at ISO 39001 and do the same thing. Go through that sort of base leadership context, key safety factors, and and put in systems to address uh, uh, those rights. So. Uh, the, the notable thing about the country side of things is that one of the key origins of ISO 39001 um, is that the codification of the management systems in road traffic safety uh, did actually uh, uh, come through country-based analyses. I think what ISO 39001 does is uh, broaden that base into a far uh, into a perspective which is far more organisationally oriented, and so. Uh, should be uh, far more relevant to uh, uh, private corporations who are needing to um, reduce risk and maximise profit. So there's a question here about, uh, with respect to accreditation to ISO 39001, what is the accrediting authority in Australia? There's a range of certification corporations which, in, uh, which are based in Australia, major corporations that you'd find in, um, um, in other countries. Uh, who are up and running, some of them more than uh, more than others, and who are provide who are, uh, be delighted to hear from any organisation wanting to uh, to certify, uh, and certainly um, a, a growing network of uh, auditors who are getting up and uh, understanding the implications of that for their of this new standard for their business as well. So essentially, um, the workshop seminar program that we're looking to roll out uh, later this year is really to prepare organisations and to build a better understanding of what the translation from your current management systems, safety systems are, to uh, the ISO 39001 um, standard and accreditation. And also, where possible, to understand where the policy changes need to be and how to build the uh, argument to adopt it. We've got one question here that uh, refers to the need for any updated databases. Some well, there's all sorts of things that uh, an organisation might find that it needs to do. I think a, a, key, uh, a key thing in implementing ISO 39001 within any organisation is to cut to the chase. Use the discipline that it uh, provides, the, the, the framework that it provides, um, but focus on the safety. Focus on the safety and uh, uh, let the let the compliance flow from there. There might be um, work that's required in uh, collecting data. That's that's quite possible. Uh, some organisations are unsure about what their exposure to risks is, for example, and that's quite critical. So there will be um, there will be some things which organisations need to uh, need to do to um, uh, lift themselves to a point where they've got a far more comprehensive uh, look at uh, uh, the road traffic safety risk than, than what they do now. And ISO 39001 is that is that new standard which basically lifts the bar across the board. It's tied right back into a deep societal uh, wish for an elimination of death and serious injury on the road. Okay, well we've got time for one last question. And that question is, um, oh, we've just gone off the screen, but I'll just go off again. Would road agencies be able or willing to introduce this ISO standard given their role in the road system goes beyond just road use? Well, road controlling authorities have a, a lot of uh, different responsibilities in, in the area and uh, it's notable that um, early uh, activity was done, has been done in relation to safety management systems in the, in the road controlling space, certainly in New Zealand, I, I know. Uh, but uh, yes, it's very relevant for any uh, any public agency. For a road controlling, uh, one thing which a, an organisation can do is um, define the scope of the application of its accreditation to a certain part of its uh, uh, operation. So um, a starting point for a road um, a road authority might be actually um, its 
uh, management of the road network which, which is available uh, for public uh, access and use. That would then go on and look at its exposure in terms of uh, you know any other corporate engaged in um, work on the road. So there's a number of different ways in which an organisation can enter into um, this space. And just finally, we've got one uh, that questions: Would it? It would appear that increasing OHS obligation in relation to workplace driver training and education improvements might be a better approach, considering the statistics. What is the relationship between professional driver accidents versus non-professional drivers? Is there anything happening in this space? Well, one of the things which uh, ISO 39001 does is put some context around um, the focus on the driver. Uh, what it does by identifying 10, the 10 safety factors that really matter most is uh, identify the fact that there are many different things which need to be um, addressed uh, in uh, reducing road traffic uh, safety risk on the road um, beyond uh, the driver. So um, I, I think that this is uh, this is an important part of um, what ISO 39001 um, does. It provides organisations with the opportunity to step back and say, what is it that we have been doing so far in reducing our road traffic safety risk? And how does that map against what this best practice tool uh, does? Driver, uh, pr professional driver um, standards are, are incredibly important. Um, there are other things which are also important. Okay, so um, we've got one comment rather than a question, and it's just in regard to you know uh, Martin mentioned that there's a lot of existing standards and um, systems that people are using. Um, but one of the participants is saying that uh, Earth's IRN, IR, oh, sorry, IRSMS have implemented a World Bank project in Indonesia and it matches ISO 39001 very well. Um, so I think that's just a comment there. Just uh, in closing, I'd really like to thank you for your participation and your time today. Um, there's been significant interest in this uh, topic. And I encourage you to um, contact training at arb.com.au to register your interest. I've also got our, um, our contact details for Martin and myself if you'd like to contact us after this um, webinar. And also if you want to get a copy of the standard. Uh, we will be sending out a copy of the presentation. I encourage you to have a look at it and, and even if you want to ask some questions after that. I hope that the presentation has been worthwhile and has answered some questions and filled in some gaps that you might have had regarding the standard. And I look forward to um, meeting with you in due course and also hearing from you if you've got any other questions. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.